for you and thinks, oh, she must not be that smart because she doesn't weigh in and try to answer any questions. The more you can be the sister who has the answer to all of the questions, and then they're like, she thinks she knows everything. And in this era, for these women, people are like, well, they can't know anything because they're quote unquote Negro women. And nobody thought any quote unquote Negro knew anything, right? right. And then you have the woman who is super sassy because she knows everything and no one is giving her a chance to shine. And so I think the takeaway for the movie, for every type of little girl watching and for every brother watching who knows a little girl and who knows a brother who gets the same kind of treatment is that you have to give people the space to be the, as great as God made them. You can't tell them no just because it hasn't been done before. Because all three of these sisters did something that had never been done before. Right, right. And that's, uh, to me, what is most empowering about this movie. Beyond that, just seeing women doing math uh, at the level and science, but still having the strength and the courage it takes to work in a male-dominated, and not just a male-dominated, but a white male dominated setting where everybody is second guessing you. You're going to see some scenes that are really very painful where a woman has to go to the restroom and she has to go probably what was the length of three blocks from here right. just to go. Yeah, so um, one thing that we've been doing every week is drawing parallels. Um, movies that have, were set in the 60s and we can draw parallels to what's happening in 2020. What are some of the parallels that you can draw right now for sisters that are working in the workspace and they're experiencing what uh, Catherine Johnson, Dorothy, and all these sisters are experiencing this movie? So I, the, there are a couple of examples that come to mind, right? Um, first of all, I think of uh, the pushback. When I started working, I work at Fox 5 News and I'm an anchor and a reporter. I anchor the noon show from 12 to 1, Monday through Friday, and then I report for 5 and 6. I have worked at Fox 5 for 17 years. And I have been working in journalism for 25. I graduated from Howard University in 1995. And when I got into the business in 95, it was a given you had to have straight hair. But I'd never had straight hair because my mother never told me anything was wrong with straight hair. I had braids, I had shells, I had twists. You know, we the, the movement has never stopped. So I was in the movement and I didn't want to have to compromise to join the industry. But I had to compromise to join the industry because that's where we were at that time. And so even today, you all, you see all these sisters now with our natural, glorious hair. Mm -hmm. That's been a long time coming for women to be able to wear their natural hair in television. Right. Because it was seen as unkempt. Mm -hmm. It was seen as you must be messy. How you gonna become a, go on TV with your hair like that? When I, I have two sons, and when I came back from maternity leave, I came back, even though I'd had straight hair and weaves and everything else, I came back with braids in my hair because I was nursing babies and knew that work was gonna be kind of challenging and the last thing I wanted to worry about was hair. And I had people calling like, you wear your hair like that on TV? And this was like 2008. This wasn't 25, 30, 40 years ago when black women really got a lot of pushback from wearing natural hair. Today, it's not so much of a big deal, but it still takes a while for you to sort of test the waters and say, is it okay just to be my full, authentic, beautiful black self? That's one that right. I think of. All right, so uh, last thing, last thing. Uh, we say these, these revolutionary movie nights is for us to spark conversation and action. Uh, as a community, what's some action you would like to see us take based off the inspiration of this movie? So the action I'd like to see us take, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Eldridge Washington, because this is action. Whether there are five people or 50 people, every single week, six weeks going now, little people walk away with a different understanding and impression of themselves. So that is action. So the action I would say to the adults, be sure you bring somebody else back out here who can walk away with a different impression of themselves. 
another form of action, I would say, especially for parents going into a virtual learning setting, is to make sure that you are supplementing your virtual education with a year-round black history education and making sure that your children know there's nothing wrong with anybody else's history but your history our history is so important to be a part of the conversation almost daily so if there is a writing assignment about something in science Whoever you're assigned to write about, make sure you do your best job doing that, but go find the black man or woman who did something in that same capacity that maybe helped. There's always behind it's all, all the great scientists. It's, it's, it's always. It's always some black folks in the background who were doing some work. So I guess that's what I would say, especially as we look at going into uh, the school semester, is make sure that you are incorporating that this isn't a Saturday night conversation or a February conversation that part of what makes us great is looking at our greatness every